In this video, we're going to do a very simple uh, integration from start to finish. So I've just started up Astro Pixel Processor. I'm going to click on the set working directory. I've selected a completely new directory um, underneath uh, my target. So call it Astro Pixel Processor YouTube. And that. And then I'm going to and turn off multiple sessions. This is a, a capture for a single night, so I don't need multiple sessions, but it was taken with the mono camera with separate red, green, and blue filters, so I'm gonna keep the multi-channel option turned on. Enter my target name, I'm 33, and select my light frames. So I go back up to captured, select my blue light frames, and prompt me to select uh, filter to assign those two, which is blue. Do the same for my green. And I'll do the same for my red. I'm just going to do the red, green, and blue for this demonstration. That's red. So I've taken some flat frames. Let's go back up to my a calibration directory. So I typically organize it like this. I have a capture directory with all my light frames and I set the calibration directory. So I'll take my blue calibration frames, my flat frames, assign those to the blue channel, and then only calibrate the blue data. Flats or green. My flats for red. And uh, I have dark frames that I like to use because I have them. With this particular camera, I could get away with just using bias frames, but for the main light frames, I will use um, darks that I have. Uh, and these are all 60 second exposures. So I'm going to take these darks. In the global channels. And then for the flats, I'm going to use bias frames for the flats. So bias are basically zero second frames. And that's again for global channels. And I'm going to stack maybe 90%. So we're going to discard. Uh, discard nine out of our 89 frames and be left with the best 80. Click down to the bottom and click integrate, and that's it. This is going to take uh, a while, so I will fast forward to the end. So that's it, the integration is finished. Took about uh, 15 minutes or so. Uh, typically, it takes much longer, it depends on uh, how many light frames that you have. If we have a look at the output, we, we go from the top down. You can see our blue frames, the, our lights. You can see all the, the columns have been populated. So we have a uh, number of stars that it's found, a uh, signal to noise ratio, a little bit half max, and then there's a quality score. And you can see which of these subframes have been integrated and which haven't. So I actually can't remember what uh, our integration uh, we said uh, we want to integrate um, 90%. So 10% of our frames we have not been integrated. So that equates to three frames. So three blue frames were not integrated. So it will be the same for green. So three green frames. And this ref beside the green means that it thought that this was the best frame out of all the red, green, and blue, so to use this as the reference frame, and all the other frames would be registered uh, to line up with it. And then there'll be three uh, red frames that we haven't integrated as well. And then we have, there's all our flats, go down to the very bottom. These are all the flies that are generated. So there's a bad pixel map for any hot pixels that you might have. And then these are the master flats that it 
it would have uh, generated. So if we have a look at those and load one of those up. Flat frame pretty much looks like this. So you see I've got some heavy big netting here on the left hand side, top left on top, uh, bottom right, bottom left even. Uh, but fairly even across the board and I typically try and keep my filters very clean. So there's very few, if any, uh, just modes. A uh, small little one there I can see. And it'll be the same for each of these channels, typically or at least I hope. A little bit more big netting on the green for whatever reason. And then even more so on the red. And then our master darks should be pretty clean given it's uh, ASI, ASI, ASI 2600. A couple of hot fixes you can see there. So either dithering will help remove those or the back fix and mop um, will pick those up as well. So now if you look, have a look at the individual integrations, so this is what the blue looks like, this is the green, and then this is the red. So if we load up the blue again, so typically at this stage this would, is what I'll do, I'll now go into my tools and remove my pollution. I'm not going to go into this tool right now in too much depth, I think. There's a merge in a completely separate video to talk about this tool. So I'm just going to kind of show basically what I'm doing. And this example image I kind of picked deliberately because uh, it's a galaxy. There's something in the middle that's not having that velocity everywhere. So the actual like removal process is very simple. Here we have to select uh, up to five boxes starting off. So if we pick maybe five boxes and it's okay, stars are in them. It will, uh, Ignore stars. We pick maybe five boxes and got four, so we need a fifth. And we calculate. To do a pretty good job straight off the bat. Now we can add a few more and try and build up a model. You can see that color coded here. Green is a good fit. So this actual box here, the gradient within this box, fits the model that has come up with very well. Yellow is it's off a little bit and red means it doesn't fit. So typically you don't want to have any red. Uh, yellow are typically okay. So maybe we need to support this yellow. And we'll add a couple more uh, boxes in like that. That should be good, maybe one more up here. And we can create. Again, for galaxies, uh, this is uh, very simple. One more here. It's when you have lots of dust that you want to keep that this tool really kind of shines. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. I'm going to remove the red, we calculate, and that's fine. Looks good to me. Okay, and save. We'll do that for the other channels as well. So if we pick green, select that, remove light pollution, and again pick. Typically, I'll pick the corners, but try and stay away from the artifacts from stacking. And pick another one up where it's more heavily light loaded. Calibrate, and then take it. Fill in the boxes. Again, the model should be fairly simple for this. Uh, recalculate. We can actually look at the model here, so we can click on Show Model and see what it's come up with. And that looks pretty good. Go back to the corrected. That looks good to me, so OK and save. And we'll do the same for red. Move like pollution. Support ones here. Here's our calculate. Yep, that looks good. Okay, and save. And you'll see down here at the bottom, you can scroll down, that it's added these files in here as well. And it appends the file name with 
whatever tool you've used to process that file. So in this case, LPC stands for like permission correction. We go into the actual directory that we selected at the start. So this is our, our working directory. And you'll see all the files here. So the file pixel map, and then it's file format convention is uh, MD, master dark, master flat, master flat, master flat for the different filters. So we see master flat for green, master flat for blue, master flat for red for infinite format. And these were the integration results with LP LPC, and the LPC are the files um, that were uh, calibrated using the light pollution uh, removal. And they're typically the files then that I would load directly into Fix Insight and do my post processing. That's it. Uh, fairly simple. I hope that um, gave you a, an idea of the tool uh, and its, um, I think, out of the box simplicity. That really all you have to do is you know, take lots of good data uh, and then load up your lights, split them into, into filters if you have a mono camera. If not, um, it's just all lights from uh, the same uh, the same camera. Uh, then you add all your calibration files. You'll sort by quality, and then select um, some percentage of those uh, frames that will be sorted then based on quality uh, to do the final integration. And then all the results will get saved out to your uh, working directory. Uh, and then you can do some post processing here if you wanted to get. I think the light pollution removal. Um, tool is great, and I typically always use that from APP and then go into Fix Insight. But within Fix Insight itself, um, you've got all these other tools to actually combine the data uh, and then uh, produce uh, a very nice end result, which uh, we'll look at in subsequent videos. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the video.